So here is the part of town that I'd like to transform into a bit of a waterfront, upscale, condo, and walkable um, feature of the city. I'd like to have shops, I'd like to have restaurants, I'd like to have walkability, a nice key that's walkable as well. And just for context, here is where we are in the city of Newmarket. We've got, we've got uh, old. What have I was? What did I designate? Historic. Okay, that's a that's a nice word. We've got historic Newmarket over here, and then we've got the downtown commercial area of Newmarket over here, the more urban center, we'll call it. Uh, suburbia is up here with its own high school and and shopping center. These buildings are intended to be sort of upscale row houses. These three-family row houses that that um, are throughout this area, and this is supposed to be the not quite as nice area, still row houses, but not as fancy, and that's okay. So we've got these different sections, and I would say east of the nicer section is where this walkable, shoppable restaurant sort of gentrified area is going to go. But it's going to be a, a tourist hotspot, as well as a nice place for locals to go out for dinner on a on a weekend. Uh, let's let's see how this shapes up. I'd like to start by following my gut and actually implementing a few paved roads. When I say paved, I mean these are going to be using the pavement texture that's built into the map. And I don't know that it'll remain this way forever, but I'd like to... Let's just start experimenting. That's it's It's been said that the way that I play is try stuff, try stuff out and see what sticks. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. I'll <laughs> I'll earn that moniker today. I'll earn that um, moniker. I'll earn that idea today for sure. But I'd like to use these paved roads. So rather than emphasizing, like for instance, this road has a yellow line down the middle, and this one has a big median, and and they're all very very road-like, very car-like. I'd like to de-emphasize that by using these these pavement texture roads throughout this area. So it's going to be paved but it's not going to look as inviting to cars as some other parts of the city. And I think that's a great way to, uh, I think that's a great way to go, personally. So another pavement road here. Just do a little three unit thing there. And let's actually get rid of the, um, let's actually get rid of the trees. It's getting hard to see. It's getting dark, too hard to see. So we're going to use Move It. And I'm going to double click trees to select trees only. And I'm just going to go, I'm going to leave the other embankment with its trees for now. Don't let, don't let me catch wind that there's trees over there. I'll get rid of them too. No, I think they look nice. And I don't think we're going to build on that opposing area just yet. I would love to go down into this section too. So let's actually eliminate these trees. And I've made a forest brush. If you use the mod forest brush, you can actually create entire, um, entire forest configurations of different trees and then just paint them in. So what I'm deleting is easily is easily replaced, right? It's not like real life where you cut down a tree and you got to wait 80 years for another one to to come in. So don't don't worry. I delete trees readily because I can put them back readily too because they are beautiful. So let's do this. Let's make some some magic happen by getting this this network going. These are all two-way pedestrian flat pavement roads. The one that I used initially, these are by a Chameleon, and I recommend them heavily. But the initial road is found in this section, and it's this flat pavement road C for connector, which is unique from this network, flat pavement road segment. Uh, this one comes in handy if you're looking for something a bit thinner and to use in parking lots. So that we'll probably use for parking lots, but now that I'm thinking it, maybe we'll just do this one everywhere, because this one has lights built in. It has these great light um, street lights, I guess I'd call them, right? We talked about this in a previous video. What do you call these where you're from? Lamp post, street light, whatever your, whatever your flavor is. I think that's good. And the goal of this road was to sort of, uh, both of these roads actually, was to somewhat mimic the curvature of the river. And I think the river is actually about to be expanded at this point, or it's going to be manipulated somehow. I'm not exactly sure how yet. Let's see if we can do another road going straight off this way, just because it's interesting and it might be cool or it might be terrible. I'm open to either. I just won't know. Like, as I said, let's 
let's see what sticks, right? It's interesting that that's the point. Where it adds a node, it doesn't want to work. So let's do 12 units. Is this going to prove viable, is what I'm looking at. For now, maybe. Another highlight of this whole thing is this network here, which is actually the uh, big urban roads pack. I'm going to be transitioning it to an asymmetrical road so that vehicles that are turning have space to do so. In fact, this whole thing is about to be transitioned into that type of road. And the way asymmetrical roads work is they function a lot like one-way roads, where you draw the road in. I'm going to look at where the nodes are. I'm looking for a central node. Perfect. Love that. And you have to reorient them based on where you want the turn lane to, to be. And that is exactly what we're looking for. That is precisely what it is. This road is probably overkill for this area, but we'll, that's, that's easily changed in the future. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Because right now they're looking pretty, pretty busted, if I do say so myself. The goal here being to reconfigure the nodes so that there's maybe a central node. And if there isn't, we can force a central node by creating, a, by, by redoing that and then manipulating these to be the correct orientation. Now, you might be looking at this. I've talked about R cuts in previous ep episodes. R C U T, restricted crossing U turn, I believe is the full name of that. The way we get rid of that, same down here, we've got this kind of wonky R cut. They look great when, when you look at them head on. They look great and functionally they're awesome. It requires a little traffic management, a little traffic manager lane arrow action to make them work properly. But it essentially stops this non priority road from being able to turn left, thus reducing, same on the other side, thus reducing a lot of conflict in this intersection. Perfect, swell, love it. This one, terrible, wonky, that's that's very bad. So we're gonna, uh, temporary or not, we're gonna throw in a traffic light. I'm gonna use a, a traffic manager, just a basic traffic light. I'm gonna click the time traffic light, control click the intersection, lovely. Uh, that also sets up lane arrows, which might be questionable because this whole thing might be ill-founded. But let's roll with it. Once again, let's see what sticks, shall we? You don't know what sticks until you stick sticky stuff to the... Anyway, so that looks pretty good. And obviously, if I were if I were a, a nut, I would go back and do all this. I've been using ladder crossings in the entire urban area, so a quick way to do that is to make one ladder crossing, copy it, paste it, paste it, just make all your crossings at once, get it done. Um, am I completely sold on this? No. But am I totally deterred? Not, not really. It's okay. We'll make it work. So let's, let's connect these two roads, because I think that this is going to make sort of a, an isosceles triangle. Let's take it back to, to the first year of, what grade did you, you learn about the isosceles triangle in? A triangle with a 90 degree, wait, is that even right? Hold on. A 90 degree angle. That's a right triangle. Oh my goodness, I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> That's the first time I've been wrong. I'm not used to this. I've never been wrong before in my life. Up till this moment. Doesn't feel good. So we're making a right triangle. I like that well enough. Let's turn on anarchy and we'll do this. I don't want to talk about isosceles triangles. I'm sorry I even brought it up. It's painful memories for many, I'm sure. I do wish I had a wall over road. Road, if you know what I mean. As in, so I do have one, but it's not going to work well here, I don't think. I do have this uh, four lane. It's not that one. There's another, there's another four lane adaptive road that I have. This one here. And this is wall over wall over road, which is cool. Or road over wall, rather. I've deactivated adaptive roads, so it's not going to work right now. Oh, and also, that's probably what it looks like. Here, is it grounded? Never mind. It's, it's great to have wall over roads, because you can build a wall that's also a key. But it's okay. Let's use, let's use what we have today. So I've got this... 
content creator one. Over here, I opted to use a brick key because this whole area is going to be brick and I wanted to hold to that motif. So we have this gorgeous brick key that I've added invisible walking paths to and all kinds of stuff. You can watch the Lofts episode to see the inception of this one and how all that happened. But over here, I think we're going to use a stone key and it's going to be this basic one, the simple seawall because I'm kind of a simple, simple guy. And also this one is built in walkable. You don't have to force it to be walkable or anything like that. Now we may end up expanding the river into this area. Many decisions are gonna have to be made about, about how this works. Let's do this first, since I know that we're about to mimic the seawall here, probably. Uh, excuse me, we're gonna mimic the angle of this road, I suppose. Oh, but how is that gonna factor in with this? Let's do this at least, let's do this at least. So we'll start here. We'll see if there's potential there. So I do like that this, this walkable section with the lamps is using the pavement texture just as the roads are. And that also means, proof of concept, I might be able to fill this in with pavement and have it be, yeah, I don't see why not. So I can probably fill this area in with pavement eventually to kind of remove that seam because I don't actually want gravel there. But that's an okay start. Let's see how far this goes up on this side and see where it turns and all that stuff. Does it need to match here? Let's do this. I'm going to turn off um, I'm going to turn off snapping for a moment. If you turn off node snapping in uh, in Fine Road Tools or Fine Road Anarchy, it gives you a ton of control over if your key is going to snap to something unnecessary. I'd love to have maybe f three or four units of space here. So let's start with that. And we'll continue down the way. More or less. More or less. Let's connect these. Ooh, the connection is nice on this one. I'm a fan. This is from the content creator pack, and this is my first time using it, so I've not really looked at this. There are these beautiful multi-tiered versions as well. Like this one, you could do a tiered seawall, which is really cool. With the staircases, I would recommend it if you were doing maybe a taller area from the water. If you were doing it like here, I really don't need the tiered seawall. I don't need the... I, I don't actually want pedestrians to walk down into the water, because that's a little absurd for my purposes, but... Uh, for now, just just know that that's an option. Just know that you could do that too if you want to. I think that gives a good amount of space between these. That's good. Now let's see. How is this going to close out over here? Maybe. Just maybe. I see this whole thing as being a promenade. I see this whole situation as being walkable, maybe with like businesses and restaurants along the way, because I think that would be beautiful. And then condos more so in this area. And I might extend this bridge. Nay, nay, I will not, I shan't. We're gonna take that away and we're gonna respect the coast as it, as it is currently. Maybe. We'll at least see what it looks like, if nothing else. I'm cool with that. And then we'll use move it here to just sort of extend this a little bit so that it so that it matches up with uh, with this guy here. And I might even adjust the height of it to this. Uh, it's a fine it's a fine line. Oh no. What is the answer? We will probably take this bridge and extend it a little ways because that's probably the real answer to this to this conundrum, to this situation here. And then reduce this a little ways. Just so we can't see it anymore. If you see that little corner peeking out of the road. Also, this is sticking through. So I'm okay with clipping things together, but I want it to be plausible ultimately. And that's actually not that visible. So let's let's start with that 
and feel out what this place can be. I would love to not pinch the river so aggressively, but what we could also do is extend the river into that into that uh, adjoining area. So let's try that. Let's terraform a little bit. Don't be terrified to ter. Just kidding. Be a little terrified to terraform because it's pretty committal. Unless you have like undo terrain modifications, unless you have uh, additional landscaping tools installed, it's rather it's rather committal. But just roll with it. Humor me. So I'm gonna approximate where the river might go if it stayed at about the same width. Let's take a mental snapshot of this width and try to create something that's about the same width. Of course, these trees are not going to survive the journey. I knew they wouldn't. Earlier was foreshadowing. I knew those trees weren't going to make it. <laughs> I have no respect for the digital forests of city skylines. I don't think we're going to do a key on the other side. I think we're going to leave it au natural, so to speak. And if we're terraforming, I might as well do this too. Might as well just get rid of those crinkles, wrinkles. Maybe similarly over here, reduce those. I find that that brick key that I liked on the other side, aesthetically it's gorgeous, but it has kind of a bunch of problems. This one, this, this content creator pack key, looks to be fantastic. It looks to be very... Well, um, <laughs> it works great. It's working great right now. Okay, let's see what the water does with that. Three speed for a moment. There's probably going to be a, a bit of flooding, maybe some nastiness. Yeah, that's to be expected. I'm going to get rid of the sand here. I painted this sand in at some point. I don't remember exactly when, but the sand was painted in by, by me. And clearly I went up the bank a little far, especially if we're sort of repurposing this section. And I'm going to want to smooth out this side and add some sand to that embankment. Or maybe it's rock face. I don't, I don't know. The width is looking good. The width of this to handle the, the current water flow situation. So I'm going to take these trees and get them up the, uh, up the embankment here a little bit. Sort of eyeball it. Oh, wow. It just re-terraformed a little bit on its own. Do all these flooded trees would be dead in reality, so let's just we'll move them up up a ways. Get them out of the kill zone there. And you as well. This is not supposed to be a swamp, this is a river. So terraforming isn't scary. It is a little scary, but if you do it cautiously with a good expectation and and maybe even if you want to practice go into the map maker go into the map editor and just mess around with terraforming if you do it on your on your build and you don't have an undo button from uh, extra landscaping tools if you don't have that mod or if you don't have the ability to to use mods or anything just go into the map editor if possible and uh, mess around with that a little bit looking much better now we can add that sand back in Oh my god. So, remember what I said about the undo button? <laughs> undo. Um, I clicked whatever that is. The ditch button. I'm, I'm going to ditch the ditch real quick. And sand away. Sand ahoy. Hmm. There's a bit of a pinch point there, but I'd like to, I'd like to establish this key first. Once I'm sure of what the, of what the key wall is doing. Then we will... Oh, we can get rid of this. That's visually a mess. Looks good. Let's continue down the way. I would like to key at least to wherever this road does what it's going to do. Maybe the tram turnaround goes into this area and then comes back. That might be a, a cool approach. But let's do the key first because that's better. That's that's the key is better done first. I found, in my opinion. So supposing, maybe when the key hits the, the, the alignment point here, maybe it goes along with this road. So let's use the road guidelines. Let's take this theory and see if it works. I'm going to use this road guideline in the center to establish kind of a distance. 
Maybe it's there. Maybe it's where, where this one is pointed. But we will follow this. That looks to be 90 These should connect. That is not remotely 90 Whoever said that was 90 was wrong. It wasn't me. Could have been anyone. How about this? We'll back that off to where it was. And we'll rely solely... Solely on our intuition here. Let's get rid of the lollipop. I, you remember how I said these were temporary in a previous episode? Well, they were very temporary. So I'm going to use this amount, whatever amount this is. And we're going to establish a 90 here. Road, line, road guidelines are tricky because it's trying to tab me to things that are just not part of my <laughs> part of my plan, my evil plan. If this continues on the way that it's going, it's going to shrink this section. And I think the goal is to not shrink this section so much because I'd like to have stuff along here as well. Let's use... Okay, the problem is I'm using key. Let's use this to establish something... Something a little better. So now we're at least parallel to this road, which is good, and we've retained a bit of space there. Now, where is this road? I'm going to turn node snapping back on because it's going to drive me insane. Where does this road hit without curving? There is where it hits without curving. Love it. So that gives us a guaranteed something. That gives us a boon to work off of. Cool. We're gonna have some good shapes here. So just for reference, this is four units, AKA 30 meters. That's not a real amount, unfortunately. It's not divisible by eight, therefore it's not a real snapping amount in the game. But that doesn't matter. Let's just go crazy with this. So we'll go for three units, 24 meters to there. And we'll connect these wherever they do. I love it. I love it. Barring the sand issues or sand, you know, the character in the sand. One thing I'd like to do here is kind of extend this curve, though. That's a bit of a bit of a sharp corner where it's sticking out a bit further than I'd like. So maybe we'll go three units away on either side. Oh, it's not going to let us. I'd have to add a node. I wish this were a road, or I wish this were, um... <laughs> I wish this were, If it were road, I could do what I'm trying to do. Here, let's, let's use this as an excuse to use node controller. So I'm going to take this from 14. This should accomplish about the same thing that I, that I want to do. And I want to extend this to about the three unit point, which will just make the corner a bit more flat, I suppose. Let's see how that looks. 33 meters. Yeah. It makes it a bit more gradual. What would the word be? It reduces the radius. It increases the radius of the turn, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Math. I keep trying to talk about math, and I really should not even think about it. <laughs> it's not it's not my forte as we've explored in past episodes now where does the key end the key probably ends well notice we are we are just north of our of our water uh, facility water <laughs> water treatment facility as explored in a previous episode we're north of that that's intentional we don't want it too close to that and i don't really want the key to continue down to this so I'm going to stop it somewhere here, probably. So let's invent a spot. We'll invent a spot, and we'll, and we'll stick with it. Maybe there. Let's do that. 11 units. It's arbitrary, but uh, the whole thing is arbitrary, if you haven't noticed. So let's, in the spirit of being arbitrary, let's do that. <laughs> I've found that... that um, 
Just making a decision is really difficult at times, but the more I, I prolong it, the worse my decision ends up being. So I would recommend trusting your gut. If you've developed your, your sense of this game or you've developed your experience with these things, trust your gut. Don't, don't freak out. That advice is as much for me as it is for you, honestly. Don't, don't freak out, Yumble. Trust the work you've already put in and, and it might be okay. <laughs> it might just work out. Uh, let's reduce the sand a little bit. I know I keep talking about this sand, but it's it's killing me the way it looks. I actually don't want any of that sand in the way. Visually, it's it's not doing it for me. So, holding down the right the right click button with the sand highlighted with the sand selected, I should be able to go and It's not particularly accurate, but That's good. Much better, much better. Uh, there was one spot here, while we're in the terraforming menu, I know that we created a bit of a pinch point here, and I don't think it looks very good, so I'm going to use, this is the level terrain. I didn't point this out earlier, but I'm right-clicking on the low point in the river, and then left-clicking where I want to extend that low point to, just so the water isn't getting hung up and pinched in one spot. And I'm going to unpause it for a moment, and let's see if the river settles down a little bit. Yes, it looks like it's it's figuring itself out. Three speed is our friend here. And of course, I've just put a bunch of trees in water. This is the battle with shorelines and city skylines. Mods are absolutely invaluable with this type of thing. Back to the sand for a moment. Put the sand up to the up to the forest. That looks fine. All right, everything's looking good. Let me pick a couple of buildings to start populating this area and we'll, we'll see what it can turn into. The tone is starting to be set here. I've got a couple buildings in. The goal isn't to, to block the entire waterfront from view. On the contrary, I'd like, to, I'd like to keep it largely visible. But I've searched condo in my assets list and I've come up with this. There's a creator called Smiley's. He makes just the absolute greatest condos. And some of these, it actually pulled up these quote-unquote mixed-use commercial. These are entirely commercial, these little one, two, three buildings. So it is going to be a very mixed little development here, rather upscale. But that aesthetic fits what I'm looking for. Maybe some more rustic buildings over here too. But let's start defining a road network that suits this area. I'm going to delete that because the nodes there are not going to serve us. And that is about what we want. Yep, that's the one. So we are seven units away from the entrance, which is a good amount, I think. This may become parking. In fact, it will probably become parking. But I don't mind sectioning off uh, an area. Another thing that I've been thinking is maybe we take this. We could add a light here also. To get rid of the the light would simply be to get rid of that texture, which is which is normal. Or no, actually, let's leave the R cut there. But that means that we'll take these because we've already put in the work. It'll take no time at all. This one failed. <laughs> Sometimes the textures just break, and that's just life. I don't know how to overcome that, but redraw it usually works out fine. That's good. Of course, this got a little messed up in the in the shuffle. Turn them all off, add our crosswalk back in, no time at all. Oh, and of course the arrows got messed up too. Control click for good arrows if you'd like. There's already a light at this intersection, so I'm going to leave well enough alone there, I think. I may end up swapping this light out for the more US style light that I've been using elsewhere, but that's okay. Let's start with this. Now this makes me want to connect a road over here so that maybe this area will have direct arterial access, but we'll leave the R cut. I take back what I said about the light. We're not doing that. We are going to leave the restricted crossing U-turn. I might, I may not be using the right initialism even. Consult the texts, consult the sacred texts about that. But that's what it looks like when you set it up properly. And on these, you just disallow the left and straight. So that one becomes right turn only. This one becomes right turn only. But it makes it very easy. If, if cars want to come from here into this area, 
they only have to either come to this main road or they can make a right out here and a left into here. So we're disallowing that straight across because this may become a high traffic area. I don't know what the context is just yet, so, but let's assume that there's a high, high density. Did I say contrast? Let's assume there's a high density area on the other side of almost everywhere in the city, because that's kind of where we're headed. Now, as far as buildings, a few more condos would make sense. Nothing too tall, perhaps, but things that fit the, the aesthetic that we've established would be nice. I may even move that one back a little bit, but the idea is right. The idea is right on the money. Just enough so that you can see the texture. That's what I'm looking at is the, the texture. Just enough so that doesn't rip and I don't have to deal with the results of that. But this leaves enough space for a nice path. So before I forget to do that, as I said before, walkability is going to be crucial for this entire area. So I'm going to take a, take a path. I'm going to make a path. That's about what we need. And I'm going to move that into place down here. thus creating a bit of walkability in between the buildings. I like that the lamps are the same too. I think I did that with Bob, if I'm not mistaken. I think I think I used Bob to replace all the lights on this entire scenario. That's good. A bit of livability, a bit of walkability. Now, maybe there's businesses along this side. Maybe there are commercial areas. So I'm going to search growable slash Rico, low density commercial, not condos, but everything and let's see what we can come up with a little a little shopping center what are you i like that this building looks old but i don't like that it doesn't have pavement under it a pizza hut would make would make a lot of sense <laughs> that's not particularly upscale but ooh, a whole foods now there's actually there's actually a whole foods built in under this area so that's fine that's fine for the residents that that are hanging out there Let's pick something fancy. This is like the bane of my experience in, in cities is that I have so many assets and I just have like crippling indecision when it comes to what assets I have and where to use them. But the style we're looking for is certainly more modern. So I don't suppose I'll use too, too many rustic buildings in this area. Those, those look nice, though. This is the aesthetic, but... But that's a very small building, I think. I'd rather not overdo it with small one-unit buildings. I'd rather have several larger buildings, probably. What is this? Get-go market? Almost. Let's search restaurant. That's a starting point. McDonald's is not quite it. And that's not bad, though it's small. Maybe this goes more towards the waterfront. Something like this, like right on the water. Yeah, that's not bad. And larger, larger businesses on the road. Because it's a larger road. So this is more to car scale. But this area is going to be very much to human scale in here. So maybe I do like the smaller buildings and businesses so as to not forget our, our pathing rule. Always add paths. AAP is the, is the rule. Never don't add pathways for pedestrians. It's official. I love that. I love that the key is walkable. This is gonna be great. <laughs> What I don't like is that little section there. I may not be able to fix that because I don't think this terraforms. I might have to use move it. Eventually, if I take move it and click the uh, the node here. No, not even. There's just going to be a gap there and that's just, that's just how it's going to be. But that's okay. It'll look great from a distance. It'll look great from everywhere else. Now let's continue with the restaurants here. This one's not bad. Bit of a wall to wall. The wild pair. Let's just go to town. Let's just do it. This is the part that's the most daunting, but I, I also get the best results. Seemingly, I get the best results when I when I hand place these things. Dunkin' Donuts on the corner. Doo -doo 
do this fits with the wall-to-wall -wall vibe no it does not some wall-to-wall -wall buildings will be two units wide and others will totally not be two units wide so that one's not going to work out but at least we know At some point, this got... Oh, when I when I put the path there, that messed up the zoning squares. We'll reinstate those because we're probably going to need them. What if instead of what I'm about to... What I was doing... Let's do this instead. We're going to rotate it to match the road here. Snap it in place. That's good. And I do like the Dunkin' Donuts there. It's going to face this way. Let's find a few more businesses to kind of pepper the area with, and then we'll we'll decide where the walkability is going to go, and maybe some parking on this side too. All good things. New China Tea Room. That's more of a downtown vibe. Bob's is fast food chain restaurant from Brazil. Well, it's going in. Welcome to Bob's. Shout out to Bob's. If you know Bob's, I've never been to one. I've, in fact, never even heard of one. <laughs> but it's going in. It's going in. Generic groceries might be a little too generic for this situation. Evan's Corner. Actually, let's do that. Let's do that, and we'll leave space for walkability throughout this entire section, and then parking down here and maybe a bit of parking over here. Hamburgers. Teeny tiny hamburger joint on the corner there. Commercial wall to wall. Not quite. Small Town America 1. Yes. Yes, I will. And of course, we've got this exactly one unit path going on here. Or space. Always put a path in those spaces, in my opinion. Anytime you can encourage walkability like that, just go for it. Without a second thought. Let's allow this to be walkable, too. We'll have to use Move It to do it, but... Let's take this and pull it up to here. To allow people to access that area. All of these, like, joints here, all of these nodes are going to end up with paths that go up to the thing. Or do I put the businesses on the water? Something deep inside me makes me want to put the businesses along the water. Though there isn't much space, we don't need much space. So let's put this guy back. And we can keep this as more of a more of a fun open area, kinda. This is gonna end up paved. I, I foresee this ending up paved. That one goes a bit too far, but we can put it over here. That buys us a little space. So large commercial buildings here, small commercial buildings here. Thanks for sticking around for the process. There's a lot of process going on mentally here. Little commercial wall to wall. Put those together. Emerald Isle Lounge. How wall to wall can we get this? None. Let's start this out. Let's just let's just get some buildings in. Wow, I have so many little one-unit buildings. Zigzag Records. Okay. Okay. I'll bite. You can go here, too. Paints. Italian. We'll just keep going. I think it's important to make a plan and then immediately bail on that plan if, you, if a better plan comes up. <laughs> I think that's... Flexibility is, is going to prove to be key. And I'll constantly have to remind myself of that fact. But There's a vape shop on the water. That's fine. We're going to end up filling that in with, uh, with stuff. The butcher shop. The barber shop can go maybe down here. More towards the, the residential section. Chick-fil-A, sure. Chick-fil-A can be on the way in. There's definitely going to be some park features in here as well. When I say park features, I mean like 
uh, walkability with trees and benches and things. I would love to get some benches and things in. Sure. Ooh, a little too tall, but close, close. That fits well enough. Cool. So that's good. Is it worth putting inward facing buildings for this section? Or perhaps this is actually parking. We can do uh, parking out behind these buildings. I'd be comfortable with that. Do more, more small buildings along here before we pave the whole thing, I think. The smallest of buildings. The home candy works. Hopefully this satisfies some of the commercial. Um, as we grow the residential, the commercial is the next thing to pop up, typically. So we may end up heading some of the commercial ne necessities off at the pass by doing this. Nope. Nope, will not fly. This one is one of the Art Deco buildings. Could a surf shop work here? The issue that I have is the, the promenade is rapidly becoming the back alley of these buildings. And I don't really want that to be the case. Let's keep the promenade nice. Let's keep the... I, I keep flip-flopping on what I'm saying, but it's coming from a good place, I swear. So we're going to turn these around. And we're going to turn these around, too. I'm okay with that, that other commercial building up there. I'm fine with that. But maybe these end up with parking, like an alley behind it. An, a slightly less desirable stretch of road that occurs. And this might go up through the middle. Nice. I'm going to continue this trend and fill it out with buildings. And then we'll see what it looks like with some trees and some leaves and some uh, some parkish looking stuff. Should be good. All right. We got some stuff going on. There's things and stuff and junk happening. So this area became a parking lot. And this central area that I thought was going to be kind of a park is not going to be that. But because of that, because I've put all the commercial in here and kind of paved it, um, trucks can do pickups and drop-offs from this back alley. If I set it up to do that, I haven't done it yet. This truck's probably going to do a, yep, do a delivery real quick on this road, which is fine. Trucks can do that, but I'm tr really trying to keep cars near the entrances. So this would be the residential parking area for, for these guys here, which frees up this little promenade for probably some more trees and planters and bushes and, uh, you know, things like that. Details. Fun fun stuff. Fun stuff. Same here. I'd like to make a little park here because I think, I think using this whole thing for parking would be a bit silly, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of, our, one of our trees here. And I'm just going to start rocking and rolling. Ooh. The key may make stuff weird at times, but that's okay. That's what they do. So I'm just going to sort of randomly go about here and we're just going to... Randomness takes a lot of practice as it turns out. Randomness takes a lot of careful planning <laughs> to make things look random. Looks random enough. Maybe some more uh, some more uh, benches and park looking things. Maybe extra paths even. Need a red tree and a red tree. Cool, that looks good. And now along here... Same idea. Let's do a red and an orange. Ooh, the angle's going to matter there. The red, the orange. This is going to be a lot like the lofts in a lot of ways. Like, my philosophy for both is, is somewhat similar. Just make a, a place, a nice place where I would want to hang out, basically. A place that would be nice enough to live or nice enough to go and visit just to have a meal. Very accessible by tram, very good parking. I've severed the tram line. I... I <laughs> I broke the tram line here, so I think that that tram line is probably all but stopped. I, I'm actually not sure how that tram is still operating. But I'll have to fix that in a minute. A little orange. A little red. I think my favorite thing about this entire city is the, the color. All the different colors. Why not green? Why not green as well? Throw a green in there. Just to mess around. Might get crazy. Grow a tree later. You know. Do, do, 
do. Beautiful. Now along here, it might be something a little more organized. Let's imagine that they were built in a line. Ooh, um, we're gonna hand place these. We are gonna hand place them. I'm gonna pause the game too. And a green. But yeah, these trees were probably planted for this area to, to grow up with. Orange, orange, red, yellow, yellow. Cool. That looks, that looks good for now. This is probably going to be green space as well. So let's, let's get some trees in it. Let's do the thing. As I said before, making stuff look random takes a lot of practice, and I'm still working on it. I'm still, it's, my randomness doesn't look all that random sometimes. <laughs> I guess the goal is to make it look more like the natural world and less like city skylines. I feel like the less, if I look at a screenshot or a video of, of the game, and I can be fooled that, that it might be a real space, that's when I'm most impressed, typically. Not always possible, but... Nice when you can pull it off. I may convert one road here into a into a road road. Because I don't like how that connection looks. Nah, never mind. We'll just we'll just leave it. Sometimes connections are funny. Of course these roads all have the same texture. This one does not. But I think I can deal with it. So of course everyone's favorite move to finish this off is actually uh, leaf decals. So it might be leaf or leaves that I search. Leaves, there they are. 613 leaf decals. And the trick with these is to double up on it. So I'm gonna take one, and I'm gonna do a second one, like that. Copy them both. Or in this case, we'll just move them over. And everywhere that there's a tree, oh no, the, tr the leaves are not visible on that. That's okay, I'm still gonna go for it, but sometimes props, these count as props apparently, props will sometimes not show the uh, the leaves as sitting on top, which is a bit of a shame, but there'll be enough of them that I think it'll overwhelm the, the fact that they're not showing up on the props, and, and most of them are not gonna be on top of props. These are some uh, parking lots by Kluss. And I guess these, because these count as props, they're just gonna, look at that, it still looks good though. We can hang with that, right? Changes everything. Decals, if you wanna put decals in your roads to make them look a bit more uh, worn, you can put tire tracks in your roads, stuff like that. Of course, these are all copied and pasted, but Ronix did such a good job on these decals that they look they look random, even though they're very much not random. They look they look random enough. I don't know if any of these are gonna need planters. These are growing from the from the ground, so they don't really need a planter. If I ever place a tree on pavement, of course I'd want a planter there. You can see that. Uh, the courthouse. I actually have been putting some pictures on Instagram recently. I put one of the courthouse and it shows uh, these planters on the sidewalk and that's where the trees are originating from. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So now you can really see the spots that don't have it versus the spots that do have it. It's a whole different, whole different ball game decals. Just a couple more to finish out this spot, then the triangle, then some benches, and I think we're, we're virtually out of the woods at that point. Maybe some trees and planters back here, actually. I think that would fill out this area even better, probably. And I'm going to have to leave this area for another time. Doing stuff here took up enough time that I'm sure the video is going to be pushing 40 minutes by now. All right, let me throw in some extra trees and some benches and we'll, we'll see where we stand. All things considered, I think that went pretty well. 
It's a good use of the waterfront. We've got some uh, solid commercial district over here. We've got some solid residential, a bit of commercial. Uh, I threw some benches and tables in and some bollards, actually. Bollards actually add a lot visually, in my opinion, to designate. You'll notice everything is paved, but the spaces that cars are not allowed to enter, like this walking path, I've I've thrown bollards on it just to add a little, a little sense of realism. Of course, that's not possible in the game because those are walking paths, but hey, I, I just think it looks really, really cool. Look at that. People are even walking on the key. I have not actually seen anyone walk on the... Okay, they're underground. I'll figure that out later. Don't worry about that. <laughs> don't don't you worry. It's going to be great. But yeah, I think that came out as it was meant to. Everybody, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for watching. Um, I, I also stream on Twitch live twice a week, so feel free to check me out on Twitch. And we have a community Discord as well. Um, I look forward to continuing work on... New Market, as well as some other projects that I have in, in the works coming up. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but please, in the meantime, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Also, please subscribe here if you want to see more videos, a lot like this one. I also do tutorials on City Skylines on occasion. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you being here. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.